All right, so once we've figured out and bought a camera, we now need to figure out what lens to buy. And something a lot of beginners don't realize is that the lens is just as important as the camera body. And there are a few things you need to consider when picking one up. So the main things I consider when picking up a new lens is what focal length the lens is, what is the aperture range, how good is the image quality, and is it a prime or a zoom lens? So firstly, let's break these four things down, starting with the focal range. So the focal range is this millimeter number here, and this represents the field of view of the lens. So for example, a 16 millimeter lens will provide a wide field of view, whereas an 85 millimeter lens will provide a tighter field of view. And depending on what you're shooting, this will determine which focal length is best for you. So for example, using wider focal lengths between 14 to 24 millimeters are great for architecture and landscapes. And then a medium field of view between 35 millimeters and 55 millimeters is great for products and portraits. And then a telephoto field of view, so lenses between 85 to 200 millimeters are great for sports, detail shots, and portraits. So just remember the lower this focal number is, the wider your image will be. And the higher this focal length, the tighter your image will be. All right, now let's move on to the aperture range. So this refers to the aperture or f-stop of a lens. So when shopping for a lens, you will usually see this f number, which represents the minimum aperture that the lens offers. And generally, the lower this number is, the better the lens will be, but also the more expensive it will be. The reason this is a premium is because the lower the aperture is, the more it can open up to allow more light to enter, which will then lead to better low light performance. Plus, having a lower aperture will cause a shallower depth of field, which will then result in a smoother and better background blur in your shots. So when choosing a lens, if you do have the extra budget, then grabbing a lens with an aperture of f2.8 or below is something I highly recommend. All right, now let's move on to the image quality. So when choosing lenses, it's super important to try pick up lenses that offer high quality glass because this will ensure you'll be capturing the sharpest and highest quality shots possible. And generally, the more you pay for a lens, the better the overall quality will be. But recently, there has been some stiff competition with third-party brands such as Sigma who offer amazing quality lenses for sometimes even half the price of popular brands such as Canon and Sony. Another great third-party company that has been absolutely smashing it lately is Tamron. So I personally own a Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lens and a 70 to 180 millimeter f2.8 Tamron lens that I use for all my Sony cameras. So with that being said, don't be afraid to pick up some high quality third-party lenses because you can definitely save a lot of money. All right, now let's talk about primes versus zooms, starting with primes. So prime lenses are a fixed focal length that cannot be changed. So for example, the three lenses you see here. So on the left is a 24 millimeter, which will be considered as a wide lens. And in the middle is a 50 millimeter. And on the right is an 85 millimeter lens. So these lenses can't change focal lengths. So for example, I can't make this 24 millimeter turn into a 50 millimeter and vice versa. So basically 24 millimeters is all you get. Now on the other hand, a zoom lens is a lens where you can quickly change from one focal length to another by twisting the zoom ring on the lens. So for example, these two lenses here. So this lens here is a 16 to 35 millimeter. So that means going from ultra wide at 16 millimeters, then being able to quickly zoom in to 35 millimeters. And then this one here is a 24 to 70 millimeter general zoom lens. And this is the focal range I recommend all beginners to start with because it provides the most opportunities to capture a variety of different shots. So for example, at 24 millimeters, you can shoot wide landscapes. Then at 35, you can capture more environmental portraits. And then at 70 millimeters, you can capture detailed shots of a location. And that's all coming from one lens. So when I first started photography, I was so confused on why you would want a prime lens over a zoom because of the limitations of just one focal length. But after being in the industry for some time now, I have realized that there are some big pros to using primes over zooms. So let's quickly cover them now. So number one is sharper images. So it is believed that high quality prime lenses provide sharper 
and higher quality shots than a zoom lens. Pro number two is that prime lenses offer lower apertures. So high quality prime lenses can stop down to apertures as low as f1.2, whereas most of the high quality zoom lenses out there stop at f2.8. So by shooting with high quality primes, you are able to produce a shallower depth of field and you'll be able to capture cleaner images in low light situations. Now, another pro to using primes is that they are generally smaller and cheaper than zoom lenses. So if you are on a tighter budget, you can still pick up some good quality prime lenses. Now, moving on to the last pro that I love about prime lenses, are you able to get more consistency with your shots because you are left with just one focal length. So for example, when shooting portraits of models, by using prime lenses, I'm able to create similar feelings within my photos and I don't have to worry about which focal lengths look best and I can just focus on my compositions and angles. Now, with that being said, there are some pros for using zoom lenses. So let's check those out too. So number one is the flexibility and convenience of the variable focal length. So the ability to be able to change focal lengths just by twisting the zoom ring on your lens is something you'll begin to love and it is the biggest selling point for zoom lenses. Another massive pro for zooms is that you won't need to carry as many lenses because even though prime lenses are generally smaller and lighter, you may need to have extra lenses to cover the distance one heavier zoom lens could offer. So for example, if you wanted to cover the same distance a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom zoom lens can cover, you would need a 24 millimeter, 35, 50, and an 85 millimeter to cover a similar distance. So in the end, you will need four lenses to cover around the same distance of just one general zoom lens. Now, another pro to using zooms over primes is less chance of missing the shot. So when you're out shooting in certain situations, there are moments where you only have one chance to get the shot. So for example, you may have a 24 millimeter prime lens on your camera, but the situation that you're in requires more reach and you need something like an 85 millimeter to capture your subject. But you may miss the shot because you would have to physically change your lens instead of being able to just quickly zoom in. And this is something that has happened to me so many times and that's probably the biggest con for primes. So personally, I do own both zooms and primes and I do use them for different scenarios. So for example, I own the 55 millimeter F1.8 and the 85 millimeter F1.8 lenses. And I use these when shooting portraits and product photography. And I also love using these primes when shooting B-roll for my videos because it allows for that buttery smooth background blur. Now the zoom lenses I currently own are the 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 Sigma lens, which I use when shooting landscapes and architecture. And I also love using this lens on a gimbal because the zoom is built in, meaning it won't affect the balance of my gimbal when changing focal lengths. Next, I also own the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 Sony G Master lens. And this is probably my most used lens because of the varying focal length and the super high quality shots it offers. And lastly, I own the 70 to 180 millimeter f2.8, which I probably use the least of all my lenses, but it does come in handy when shooting street photography and also when I work with some of my sports clients. But there we have it guys, those are the four main things to consider when choosing a lens. Lens. But some bonus things to check for is if the lens offers autofocus because some older lenses will be strictly manual focus, meaning you will have to manually set your focus by adjusting the focus ring on the lens. So depending on the style of your shooting, this could be a massive turnoff. Also, something to keep in mind when using third-party lenses is that sometimes the autofocus won't be as accurate and as fast as using native lenses. Now, another thing to consider is image stabilization, which is a great feature that will help you capture smoother shots when doing more handheld styled shooting. And lastly is filter thread sizes. So this is important when you are looking to use lens filters like an ND or mist filter, but I'm not gonna go too into detail about lens filters in this video because I do have a dedicated video for that, but it is something to consider when choosing a lens. But there we have it guys, those are the main things to be aware of when purchasing a lens. 
And like I mentioned earlier, if you only have the budget for one lens, then I highly recommend you pick up a general zoom lens. So again, that's a lens that covers around 24 to 70 millimeters or 24 to 105, and even an 18 to 55 millimeter will be a great place to start. But with that being said, that wraps up this one. I hope you found some value from this video. And if you're interested in improving your photography skills and learning how to actually make money with your photography, I'm currently running a free photography masterclass where I break down my top tips to capturing professional looking photos. Plus I'll be breaking down the five key steps I took to making over six figures a year as a full-time photographer. It's 100% free. So if you're interested, you can hit the link in the description below to register star and i'll also be posting a lot of new videos to this channel so if you want to stay up to date with all the new content coming hit the like and subscribe button on your way out and i'll see you in the next one